Raiden Shogun's rerun has been announced, and this is an honest look at 15 things you should consider before pulling for her. The first thing that comes to mind when looking at Raiden is, of course, the Electro element. Now, it used to be that a lot of us in the community would consider Electro to be one of the most underwhelming elements in the game, but that mindset shifted after Raiden's arrival, because she really made it clear you don't need to have powerful reactions like Melt or Vaporize in order to get the best performance. In fact, Electro is pretty much essential for physical characters, the resonance bonus is amazing when using multiple Electro units in a team, and even Overload becomes a decent reaction when used in certain teams. And this really becomes obvious when looking at some of the most popular team comps with Raiden one of the best examples being the National Variation, which quickly became known as Rational, that absolutely destroys any kind of content you throw at it, and I've been personally using it on all weekly bosses in every single Abyss cycle because it's just a really comfortable team where you can make a lot of mistakes and still clear any kind of challenging content. And that's just one of the few powerful teams you can build with her, and you can check out my previous video I've made about this topic. But you might be wondering, if you're building a team with Raiden, just how necessary is Kujo Sara since with the recent trend of introducing 4-star characters to support the newest 5-stars, it may make you believe that it's almost mandatory to have someone like her. I know that Ito and Goro really solidified this idea that the Oni guy badly depends on Miss Hina, which to some extent is kind of true, but the difference between Ito and Raiden is that she's definitely more of a flexible unit that can also be used as a support, but more importantly, you can boost her damage in all the traditional ways we've been doing it so far, not to mention the fact Electro still plays well with other elements on like Geo, who can create a silly little crystallized shard that nobody really cares about when we talk about increasing damage output. So no, Kujo Sara is not mandatory, even if you have her at C6, because while that damage boost for Electro is pretty insane, after playing with her and Raiden for a long time, I can tell you that while it's amazing to see big burst slashes climbing towards half a million damage, most of the time it's an overkill and you can still build a lot of different teams without needing to rely on C6 Sara. Besides, I've just shown you that one of her best team variations doesn't even include her. Truth be told, the actual thing that will make or break Raiden are going to be her artifacts and it just so happens that she badly needs Emblem of Severed Fate in order to function as a capable unit, which is not that big of a deal since this artifact set is located at the best domain in the entire game when we talk about how efficiently you could spend your resin, since you can basically use both of the sets on a ton of different characters and most of them consider these sets to be their best in slot. However, artifacts being artifacts and Genshin Impact, you you could potentially get unlucky with substats, so keep that in mind when preparing for Raiden's rerun. Either way, I personally believe Raiden is an extremely capable character and offers a lot of value for new and veteran players alike, but I'd like to focus now on things that are really worth considering. I've been being around the bush for a couple of minutes now, so let's just get this out of the way. Is Raiden really only usable at second constellation? No, of course not, but the jump in power is definitely noticeable, and some would argue that if you want to run Hyper Raiden team comp, you would need her to be at C2, but the reality is, why exactly would you want her to gain a boost in power anyway? Look, it's no secret that in the theory crafting community, it's been said that a jump from 0 to second constellation provides about 50% overall damage increase for Raiden, which seems almost unbelievable if you think about it, and to some extent, it kind of is, because while on paper that number seems pretty huge, it's easy to forget even at C0 her damage output is comparable to almost any other C0 damage dealer, with some few exceptions here and there, so instead of thinking that you need her second constellation, I would say that it's more of a long-term goal you could focus on if what you want to see is bigger damage numbers. In fact, just because of how ridiculously strong her second constellation is, you can think of it like as a final constellation most other characters unlock, so while someone like Xiao and Ganyu gain massive power boosts at C6, for Raiden, the goalpost is moved to only the second constellation, so I think that's actually a pretty good thing to have, and seeing how Raiden's rerun is already happening after 6 months, we can hopefully expect this to happen more often thanks to double banners, and honestly, you shouldn't feel the pressure to immediately unlock second constellation Raiden, and instead, see if you enjoy playing with her for a long time, and then maybe decide to go for C2 or even C3 if you want the full package. And I say this is the full package, because while the rest of the constellations are nice to have, they are not even half as important as the second one, so hopefully this sheds some light about her power level. But just to be fully transparent with you, I do have a C3 Raiden and I've been using her nearly every day and she's actually the only feature 5 star on my account that has multiple constellations unlocked, but I only obtain them sometime later after first making sure you can easily clear the abyss with C0 Raiden. Also, I kind of have a weakness for Electro characters, I really like their design 
fine. So it's possible I might do the same for Yai Miko when she comes out, unless of course her first few constellations aren't that groundbreaking. We talked about her potential, we went over her constellations, now it's time to look at Engulfing Lightning. And I know what you're thinking, do I really need it? I mean, it all depends on how you look at it, but at the end of the day, this is her best in slot weapon, no doubt, although the damage difference when compared to something like a fully refined catch is about 17% on average, but it can go up as high as 25%, depending on the amount of luck you have with substats like attack percentage or critical damage, as well as party members who can buff up the damage. Still, the biggest difference I see right now between between her signature weapon and getting more of her constellations is that the weapon doesn't remain exclusive to Raiden, since you can actually use it on quite a few characters and it's almost the best weapon you can give to them, some examples being Shangling and Shenhe, but since this weapon provides a huge amount of energy recharge, it will remain relevant for any polearm user that requires fixing up their burst cost. But here's the tricky part, assuming you have the worst luck out there, which is something you should always do before putting too much hope into your wishes, you still need to account for the epitomized path that will only let you get your hands on the new shiny signature weapon after getting unlucky two times, so this essentially can translate over to about 225 to 270 wishes just so you can get the weapon. Now I don't know about you, but for a weapon, that's a lot of primo gems, and unlike with featured character banners, nothing carries over so you have to start from zero and work your way towards the epitomized path minigame, or as I like to call it, mini bank account drainage game, but if you are dead set on spending a lot of wishes for Raiden, I did go through multiple scenarios shown here just to see what would be the outcome if we talk about the worst case scenario, being that you always get Raiden after 50-50 guaranteed pity, and if you only get the weapon on fulfilling the epitomized path. Well, it turns out if you already have C0 Raiden and your next guaranteed pity is the featured 5 star, then you can actually get a C2 Raiden within 3 pities, which is the same amount of worst luck you would need to have in order to get engulfing lightning. Otherwise, getting the weapon will be a better boost to her power instead of unlocking something like the first constellation, but if you think about it, even getting one step closer to C2 means maybe next time her rerun banner shows up, you can spend less primos to unlock it, so it really depends on your preference and needs. As I I am only showing you what the scenarios could be if you're really interested in unlocking either her weapon, constellations, or both. Regardless, while engulfing lightning is great, don't forget you can still use one of the best free-to-play weapons at the catch, and if you have multiple refinements of Wave Breaker's fin, it's actually even better than the previous option, since with the right amount of attack buffs, it can make Raiden hit for almost the same amount of damage if she had an unrefined Staff of Homa or Primordial Jade Wing Spear, so yeah, there's definitely some weapons that make her shine without needing to spend large amounts of primo gems. Look, it's always crucial to consider the timing of the banner, so seeing how Raiden is going to be in the second phase of 2.5, which is around March 9th, if following the usual 3 week window after Yai Miko banner drops, so there's basically a couple of things that become important because of this. The first and most obvious observation is that Mihoyo always does a livestream announcement of the next update about a week and a half later after the second phase banners drop, so before you go off spending primos, I highly recommend for you to just stay put with your wishes until the livestream arrives, since we know that the chasm is coming in 2.6 and it's highly likely Ayato will be in the update seeing how Mihoyo already announced him on Twitter, so the remaining surprises to look forward would be to see who's going to be on the rerun. And I know, a lot of people are waiting for Kazuo has banner rerun, who I think is a really powerful character, and I've been using him ever since he got released in almost every team comp, and he's only C0, so I don't believe he needs any extra constellations to get the best value out of him. Still, comparing him with Raiden isn't really a good idea, as they are both extremely different, seeing how Kazuha specializes in boosting elemental damage, as well as crowd control, while A helps with energy management, as well as acting as an on-field damage dealer when using her burst mode. But besides the unknown, when looking at the current upcoming banners, it's hard to tell if Yai Miko will have a strong synergy with Raiden without first testing them out together, so if you do decide to go for the Fox and you're also considering getting the Shogun, then be sure to check out my future video where I will showcase them together and give you my thoughts. Overall, Raiden is definitely one of the strongest characters in the game right now, since you can build a lot of different teams with her, the Emblem Artifact set is located in one of the best domains in terms of how efficiently you could spend your resin, and even if she is from the Electro Elements, something that was previously considered by the majority to be a lackluster thing for elemental reactions, it's actually a really advantageous utility Raiden can make use of. 
You also do not need to have Kujo Sara with Raiden just to see her full potential, but if we talk about her potential, then even at C0, she's able to match a lot of damage dealers out there, and while her second constellation provides a massive boost in power, you can still unlock it realistically within few reruns, and its value is on the same level as most of the other C6 characters, so even as a free-to-play player, with careful Primo Gem management, you can focus on this as a long-term goal. And as for her signature weapon, while it is considered to be the best in slot, there's still plenty of other options out there like the Catch or Wavebreaker's Fin, as well as Staff of Homa or Primordial Spear if you have them, so I wouldn't consider engulfing Lightning as a mandatory upgrade just to see a bump increase in her performance. Finally, Yaimiko, Kokomi, Kamisato Ayato, and maybe even Kazuha in the nearest future are going to be squishing right in from both sides, but as long as you know what you want, the only unknown right now is just how good is she going to be with Yaimiko, and that that's only relevant for you if you're going for both Yai and Raiden combo anyway. Still, just like with every character out there, she's not a must-have, and there are some drawbacks, like the fact you really can't use her with Beto or Electro Traveler, because Raiden won't trigger their bursts, and the elemental skill itself deals not a lot of damage, which means all the damage is concentrated in her burst and the initial slash, as well as the fact Emblem Set is really the only option worth going for, and if you get unlucky with substats, it could take a while to make her strong. So keep this in mind that just like everyone else, Raiden has her own flaws the definer, but at the same time, she's extremely capable, and there's a reason why she became the most highest selling character in Genshin's history. But that's pretty much it, hope you found these considerations useful, and I'll see you in the next video.